Dennis, you, you just heard from a retail analyst that's been on all these calls that demand is actually okay. It's the it's the margin issues and the inventory issues which is plaguing the retailers. So, what are you looking for from the consumer? Yeah, I think the inventory issue is very well understood, uh, and a lot of retailers are are selling inventory and, and marking that down. They're going to clear out the channels and renormalize that. And, and Best Buy is is a better operator at that than others. I think the real thing that we're focused on is looking forward is the impact of Fed rate hikes hitting the real economy. You're starting to see it hit in the early areas of the economy, like housing and autos. Affordability there, even before the Fed started hiking rates in March, was bad. If you look at the U Michigan survey of consumer buying conditions, people thought it was the worst time since the early 80s to buy a home or an auto, even prior to uh, the impact of that. And as we get later in the year, we think the consumer is going to run out of steam. Negative real wages, which have hurt consumers, will remain a headwind. And then you start to put in the impact of just higher interest rates, and then banks now starting to tighten credit, with credit being the lifeblood of the economy, uh, paints a, a very gloomy picture for the consumer as we uh, exit the year this year. I'll just take the other side. We just got a consumer confidence number from the conference board, Chris, that showed a big jump, 103.2 in August, better than expected as gas prices come down, better sentiment, better spending. Yeah, well, that the Commerce Board's uh, jobs number or uh, service conference number was better today. That tends to be in, influenced by employment trends. Now, here's the thing with employment and jobs. Jobs in highly inflationary environment, if you look at the 70s recession, the 74 and the 80s recession, jobs didn't turn down until you were actually in a recession because First of all, companies pass through those higher wages, and eventually those negative real wages impacted the consumers. So the behavior we're seeing with the jobs market and those confidence numbers, and the conference board numbers more lean towards the job market than the Michigan survey, which is more towards gas, is not shocking to me. Um, it's just reflective of what is a an anomalous period of time and something we haven't seen in a long period of time. So when, are, in your opinion, are we going to start to see real cracks in the job market then? I think we're already seeing it, David. We've seen it with some of the tech companies starting to announce uh, hiring freezes and some layoff announcements. Jobless claims have started to tick up. Those are always the earliest indicators. And the reality is, as folks come back from the beaches and the Hamptons and other places uh, over the coming weeks, you're going to start to see layoff announcements on Wall Street. And the high-end spending, which accounts for 40 percent of the economy, um, is really driven by asset prices and, and housing. And we're just starting to see cracks in, in both of those. So it takes time, but we're just going to start to see it, I think, pick up a lot in the fall. Even though openings still look healthy, we, we just got a really strong number on, the, on that front, too, which is confounding, I think, a lot of expectations, Chris. Yeah, well, that's confounding, too, right? Because you have job open, the job openings numbers, the glass half empty, half full. Does that mean the Fed has to go higher for longer, which has been our view all, the, all year long? Yeah. And so just suggest that, you know, wage pressure is not going to go away anytime soon, given that. Yeah. Chris Senyak, thank you for joining us.